And of course, with us are Luci Cruz Valdez, the head of News 5, uh, Ami Pamintuan, uh, who is joining us now. Yeah, I'm Apo. Ami Pamintuan of the Philippine Star. And uh, Robbie Alampay of One News, who will be joining us in a few minutes. What's the big story today? Hindi yung... Oh, nawala, nawala, naka-mute siya. Ta. Luchi, you're, you're, I think I... you're muted. Oh, ayan na, okay na. Ah, wag niya ako tanungin, biased ako. <laughs> si Park Sojun ang top of mind ko eh. Sino? Si Park Sojun. Oh, Kasi no. siya lang ba doon ang doser ng smart. Oo nga. Ang baba. Napaisip ko kung anong, anong story malaki dun sa atin. <laughs> Did they miss out on something? <laughs> oh, marami mga mga kami sumusunod niyan. Siyempre, yung follow-up nung, ano, nung mega task force, uh, yung yes. lima daw priority agencies, no? Well, yung mga laging binabanggit siya ni Presidente, DPWH, of course, kasama na ngayon yung PhilHealth, yung mga revenue yeah. collection agencies, BIR. Oh, so, 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 BIR. Yeah. Yeah. Although, yeah. ewan ko, yung ngayari doon. Saka, yun nga, yung... Agriculture, ang sinama agriculture. Nagsuspindi yung ombudsman ng mga finally. Ewan ko kung dahil lang dyan sa creation ng mega task force, pero sinuspindi. Preventive lang naman yung mga field health officials. Ewan ko kung sino pa nagtira doon. Paano kaya yun? Oo oh, eh. Pero nag-a-appeal nag yung Department of Health eh, doon sa preventive yeah. suspension. Ah, eh, yung... Kasi lima yun na nawalan sila na very hmm. active nga raw doon sa, yeah. uh, you know, anti-COVID. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. may urapan na naman sila. But uh, yeah. I wonder if that will be lifted, di ba? Considering how controversial uh -huh. female health has been, no? Uh -huh. uh, so, uh, yeah. 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 Si Dante Giran, kasi si Giran coming, is coming in from the cold, eh. I mean, uh, his background yeah. is the NDI. Yeah. So, sabi niya, he will be relying on a lot of people in field health to bring him up to date. Uh -huh. Yes. Eh, kaso no, wala so, lahat ng tao dyan, papano yan? Naubos. Oo oh, nga eh. <laughs> parang, parang ang hirap ng ordination niya, di ba? Parang inappoint siya, pagkatapos ongoing naman yung dalawang investigations, di ba? Yes. I'm in the house, and then sa DOJ. So parang, parang hindi mo malaman kung, kung ikaw rin si, si Geran, di ba? Eh, paano na, na dalawa na yung nag-investigate where do I start, where do I fit in here so hirap din yung kalagayan niya uh, tapos ngayon natatakot raw siya kung ilos dito sa PRC rin at least at what Senator Gordon thinks no? yes. and yeah. that's your segue yun ang segue Lucy was talking about our first guest for tonight of course uh, our first guest tonight is uh, the chairman of the Philippine Red Cross and, of course, Senator Richard Gordon. Senator Gordon, thank you po for joining us again. Good evening, Ed. Good evening, Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the Red Cross, and you're in red. red. Red Cross ang ambassador siya. Kinawa siya <laughs> Nagbayad okay. na po kahapon ng uh, kalahating bilyon ng uh, ang gobyerno and I, I think today nag-resume na yung uh, testing ng Red Cross uh, for COVID-19. Pero at the same time, uh, you were quoted saying na you're giving uh, PhilHealth three days or the government three days uh, by which to come up with 560 million pesos more yung balance. Eh. Uh, by, uh, well, three days nga. Uh, what happens in three days pag hindi natuloy yun? Well, I'll tell you when that happens. Uh, there is a contract that uh, after we charge them, after we test, we, uh, they have to pay within three days. And they have totally violated that from day one. Can you imagine it went up to 1.1 billion because for 50 days, they never paid. They never paid anything. And then you 100 million na sinasabi dyan. That only happened once. And it is just like a revolving fund. Pag raubos, bayad kagad. Para hindi lalaki. Kasi pag lumaki, Nahihirapan na magbayad yung mga yan kahit na may pera. Natatakot na, tinatakot na. So, to my mind, uh, it really is silly. Can you imagine? This is an international humanitarian organization. We are the biggest testers in the country. Not because we wanted to, but because the government asked us to. When they found out that we had all these eight machines, they asked us, and we did our job, and then we put up 22 testing uh, machines in Manila, we're even under capacity. We're only able to test 13,000 at most 
the highest was 16,000, and that was only one. Pero we, we put up where they wanted us to put, in missionary areas, we were there. We're not in business. We charge 3,500. Yung iba, nagbabayad sila ng 4, 5, 5,000, 7,000, meron pa 20,000, madalas yan ngayon sa airport. People yeah, took well, advantage you know, of the high issues. Ah. Hmm. Yan ang problema sa atin. Eh. There's no love of country. Hmm. Oh, pero so, ano, so, ano so, ngayon? Oh. In, sige po. Eh, in layman's terms ko, uh, kasi there's been talk about that memorandum na kinikwestyon yes. na uh, between Red Cross and uh, the Field Health and doon ang inlo ang kinakatakutan eh. So, so people are wondering, uh, the government's been talking about billions of pesos in ayuda pero ang isang bilyong piso na, na importanteng COVID testing eh, hindi mabayar ng, ng isang bagsakan. Bakit po? What's the, what's, what's the, the root of all this in layman's terms? And, takot talaga si Atty. Giran. Natakot siyang gumalaw. And you know, uh, uh, nagbayad naman na dati yan eh. Uh, tumigil rin namin earlier. Nagbayad sila ng 700 million. Una, 400 taas na bayaran lang yung 700 million. Ngayon, we started asking them to pay. Babayaran raw, babayaran, babayaran. But we cannot stop because people keep coming in. Eh kung tumigil nga kami, eh, ngayon natatakot ako. Yung pagtigil na yan, paglabas ng testing na marami yan, baka dumami na naman ang positive. Ang iniingatan ko, magkasakit ang tao. Ang iniingatan ko, babalik tayo sa lockdown. And when that happens, that we are the losers for it. The whole country is the losers for it. Now, you cannot give the excuse na bago lang ako rito, hindi ko alam. And then, he, she went the whole nine yards. Pumunta siya sa DBM. Sabi niya, pag nakuha ko yan, nangako muna siya, babayaran. Hiningi niya muna, ibaba ko ng quality and test. Eh, ayoko po mayag nung araw because may kanukuhan doon eh. But anyway, sabi ko, sige, bababa ko na para kaibigan naman kita at ngayon ko lang papasok. Sige, bababa ko. Babayaran niya lang kami in two days. That was a week, uh, that was a month and a half ago. After two days, hindi na. Tapos ang balik na. Ah, kailangan ko sabihin ko muna ng DBM, sir. O sige, ko sabihin mo ng DBM. Hindi sila ang lumusod doon. Yung procurement board, sabi, above board yung contract. And then finally, he went to DOJ, the lawyer of the government. How dare do these people in PinHealth, which is the repository of a lot of crime, a lot of greed, a lot of corruption, these two lawyers say, ah, meron, defe meron defect yung contract. When the, when the lawyer of the country... Menardo Guevara, the Secretary of Justice, has said, it's about board. Eh ngayon, sasabihin na naman lang, tapos na yan, meron excuse. Kaya, ayokong mainis, pero talagang uh, they're dribbling. And when they dribble, it's the people who suffer. Paano nga ba naging disadvantageous daw yun? Uh, <laughs> ang sinasabi nga raw po nila, Sir, ay unang-una, PhilHealth cannot hold the Red Cross responsible for any damage or liability that may arise from its services. That's one. And number two, wala man lang daw uh, specific provision for monitoring the utilization, liquidation, reportorial requirements in regard to the advance. Anong masasabi nyo ron? At least that's the whole panel, okay? the joint panel. Let, let me quote. Sabi ng Department of Justice, the moment between the PHIC, which is Will Health, and the PRT does not suffer from any legal infirmities that will render it invalid. Malinaw, very clear. I read the opinion, nagulat na ako, it's very, very clear. Walang duda. Ano yeah. na sinasabi nila na uh, wala ro uh, wala ro uh, magbabantay? Yeah. We report yeah. every day. The Coast Guard does the testing. They send it to us. Under the contract, will help must help. Sabi ko, ako nagsabi niya, maglagay kayo ng tao niyo dyan para you can check kung tama yung ginagawa ng mga tao namin na baka nagdadagdag kami. Hindi, hindi ko rin makakawa dyan. So, they never sent anybody in any of our laboratories. They refused. They never sent anybody. They violated their own contract. And then what happened afterwards? Uh, when we started swabbing, nagbayad naman sila ng, ng, ng testing. Eh, when we submit the test, we follow the rules strictly. Ano yan? You have to have the uh, case investigation form. No testing is conducted without a corresponding case investigation from CIF submitted to PRC's online platform. In the beginning, I think you interviewed me before, it was absolute bedlam. You were getting hundreds of thousands of people from OFWs, and we were working day and night. Walang tigil. And then until finally we were able to get it computerized. We were supposed to submit a line list. Name, address, age, sex, requesting entity. 
type of specimen and the structure test. We even provide pictures. We even got pictures of the passport. Okay. Okay. Signed by the Medtex, who are uh, licensed by the PRC and who conducted the test, and the pathologist. And, you know, pag sinabit mo yan, under the contract, bayad na sila dapat. Ano ba hinahanap nila? Hindi naman nila sinasabi. They're vague. They don't specify. Ah, hindi kami... Mm -hmm kami makapaniwala. Ano, ano ang hindi niya mapakaniwala? Tapos sumulat sila ngayon, uh, we would like to renegotiate. What do you want to renegotiate? They don't even give us any indication. So, ang nakikita ko, they're just delaying. Uh, and, uh, you know, you're putting the country in harm's way all the time. Yan ang problema. Now, I have investigated Phil Health previously, not on this matter because may delikadesya naman tayo. Inimbisig ako sila doon sa mga kurakot. Matatakot siya. Bakit? Andiyan pa yung mga nagwalang niya sa PhilHealth. I have prepared a document. Lahat sa mga regional director na nag-overcharge, na talaga nagpapalaki ng kaso, na andiyan pa, hindi nila tinanggal. Mabuti, si President Duterte, sabi niya, investigay lahat ang walang niya. So, sinabit ko yan ngayon kay Secretary Guevara, papadala ko yan, at para makita niya and ma-investigate. And the goods are very clear. I'm a lawyer. You'll be able to see the overcharging that they conduct, uh, and uh, mahuhuli lahat siya. Bakit kaya kinakabahan si Attorney Geran by, by at least uh, by your own <coughs> assessment? What would be his reason for, you know, to be nervous about this, about paying Phil, uh, PRC? This is the result of uh, previous experiences. Sabi niya, pag nagpalit ang Pahulo sa so 2022, ako may iwan, papano naman ako? Ako, ako ang pagpipiyasahan ang bagong administrasyon. Eh, if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to risk that, don't accept the position. The title takes you the responsibilities that you have to accept. Remember, I, don't want, I respect this man a lot, somebody from DPWH, he froze. <coughs> he could not sign any orders. Kaya ang walang nagawa yung DPWH and he's well respected in the business community. Natatakot siya na yung sinusubo sa kanya Eh, baka mayroong mga trap inside uh, para mapahamak siya. And in PhilHealth, notorious yan. Every time they have a new, uh, you're all investigative journalists, take a look at the uh, row of presidents that PhilHealth has removed through the years. Every other year, they remove the president because of this mafia inside. Kaya in the meantime, sir, hindi ba, nirisume nyo na yung, ano, yung testing sa OFW. Saka, mm. But at the same time, sinuspindi ng ombudsman, yung mga walo yata yun, na official, top officials, hindi ba magkakabagalan na naman niya ng, ng bayaran? You, you see any, anong impact nito dyan sa you want them to pay within three days? Pero ang hinihiti renegotiation. Are you expecting payment in three days? Definitely. Because they keep saying, may pera kami, babayaran namin kayo. Every day, sinasabi niya yan. Mm -hmm. Ang hiningi niya lang, yung mga rekrutitos na hindi namin maintindihan, kung ano, yung documents. All the documents are there. What we give to DOH, we give to them. The requirement ng contract. At the mm -hmm. same time, pati nga yung pag-report ng positive, kami na nag-report. You know why? Pag pinapadala namin yung positive results, sila magdi-distribute, sila dapat ang tatawag. Hindi na tatawagan. Sometimes, six days, five days, eh, syempre na andun yung tao, alam na natin positive, Hindi niya alam positive siya, ikot siya ng ikot, he's spreading the disease. So we said, okay, kami na lang ang papadala, kawawa naman ang tao natin. The request will step into the plate because you have a vulnerable situation here. And that's what we did. Yeah. Yeah. Then, ha? Walang pa? Senator, nang ang kasi presidente, sinasabi ng Malacanang, kapag, kapag ganyang nagkaroon ng ano, problema pa rin, tuloy-tuloy pa rin, they will go na lang daw to the private testing center. Yes, meron bang ganong capability? No, I mean, meron bang ganong capability? Pero so, mahal. Kasi kayo, kayo, yung, kayo yung pinakamaraming laboratory, eh, di ba? Kayo yung pinakamabili, oh, yeah. pinakamura. May capability and we, kayo private. And we are in the missionary post. We did not build the building in Surigao. Mm, mm, Sino mo po na sa Surigao? Sa Juan, sa Negros, mm. kami na kayo. We're now finishing PASI for the whole island of Panay. Uh, mm -hmm. we're, we have in Cebu, we have in Batangas, which is a hot spot in uh, Cagayan de Oro, which covers Marawi. We're going to build and burn. I just sent that a letter. So we go with what has happened. I do not know if I should follow your recommendations that I will build in these missionary areas. Because mm -hmm. look at me. Look at me. Yeah. But, Senator, 
I mean, but, but Senator, that also begs the question, which was actually raised by somebody from the UP College of Medicine, I believe we had him as a guest uh, a few weeks ago, where he said, look, at the end of the day, PhilHealth is a conduit here so that PRC gets its money for the service it renders. They, is there no other option other than PhilHealth for that transaction between government and for that matter, taxpayers, PhilHealth members, and the PRC? Is there is there no other potential conduit? Para lang, para lang kung magulong katrabaho ang PhilHealth, hindi ba pwedeng may ibang katrabaho? No, bakit tayo nag-dotolerate ng mga mahihina sa gobyerno? Hmm. Why, why surrender that? The law says so. Our failure has been our lack of ability to enforce the law. The law says they must pay. If they do not pay, then change him. If he cannot handle it, change him. Hindi naman tayo nabibulit eh. If they want to test elsewhere, sinasabi ni Secretary Roque, oh, kaya namin ibigay sa private sector. All right. Sige, ibigay nyo na. How much is the private sector charging? Sige nga, 4,500 na pinakamababa. Ah, karamihan, 7,000. Ito, meron ako mga resibo. Nakalagay dyan, no? Aculab, 13,500. Promo price, 6,500. Eco solution, 10,000 to 20,000 if you want it immediately. The toxic care claims na magta-charge sila ng 4,000 pero tinataas nila yan pang nagmamadali. Ang Red Cross, 3,500 for PhilHealth sa private sector. And I know uh, uh, Ami went to the Red Cross she yeah. paid 4,000. Bilib nga ako sa kanya. She paid 4,000. Walang angal. nag like, oh, results. Why are we complaining about this? We have a whole war going on. People are dying. And if we have, if we make this mistake again, we go on a lockdown again. We cannot afford that because we are overborrowed already. Okay. Yaman, sila? Anong pwedeng mangyari, sir, pag hindi pa rin sila nagbayad within the next three days? Actually, two days left. But you see, the, the government asked us to test. Kami na lahat. We never volunteered. They asked us to test. We put up all these machines. Ginamit naman, na test naman. You have the results. We have 1.115 million people tested. In Manila alone, Red Cross represents 38% of the 2.8 million tested. Nagawa, no? So, ngayon, sasabihin, hindi kami babayaran. Aba, edi, sige. Uh, you, you go ahead and let's see. Pagka nagkasakit ang mga tao, you have only yourselves to blame. I'm not gonna cut my nose and spite my face. I'm not built like that. When I see wrong, I will say it. And they are wrong. If they put a guy there who's afraid, they are wrong. If they do not remove the snakes, hyenas in that organization, they are wrong. If they do not pay their debts, what is the result of the whole world is watching us here. The International Red Cross has said, has hailed the Red Cross as the only Red Cross society in the world that conducts testing and the highest in the Philippines. And then now they're not going to pay. Nobody's going to come here. You don't honor your contracts. Na deliver na yung goods, ayon yung bayaran. There is a term for that, and I don't really want to say that. Manunuba. Yun lalabas sa atin. We don't honor our contracts. We change the rules in the middle of the game. You know, sir, sir Tulucci's question, sir, what will you do nga pag hindi nagbayad in three days? Sabi natin yeah. uh, today's Wednesday, so Sabado. Yeah. Pag sa Sabado, eh, wala pa rin bayad. Will you stop pa na? Will you put a stop uh, again or halt again the testing of COVID-19? I'm sure. Tomorrow, Attorney Garan has asked for a meeting with me. I, I will accommodate him and I will tell him the facts of life. He has to show good faith because all along, since he took over and before him, they've been showing bad faith. You know, contract is a meeting of minds and it is based on trust and good faith. Once somebody is trying to violate that contract, we have our own recourses. I'm a lawyer. I don't want to go to a court suit, but certainly I'm also a senator and I'm not saying magkamali kayo dyan. Talagang aararuhin ko yung field help para malaman lahat ang kalukuhan ninyo dyan. Already we have done that. I'm not threatening that. I don't give away the threats. But really, it's important. We have a war at in our hands. People are dying. Our economy is threatened. And the president himself ordered. That's insubordination. Hmm. President said pay. DOJ says, ako ang lawyer ng gobyerno, lumapit kayo sa akin. Lumapit sila, tapos hindi nila yung honor. And two snot-nosed lawyers in their department hmm. will certainly say, mas magaling kami dyan, may mali. Excuse me. Why don't they sit down with us and tell us, eto ang mali. And then I'll say, okay, sige, kung mali yan, sige, kung nahihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihih
But I am not going to do it just on your say. So you have to come around because uh, I don't want to deal with people who cannot keep their word. Mm -hmm. Kaya nga, sir, ang tanong ko lang, ano bang kinatatakuto ni Attorney Geran? Baka, sa, baka siya ang hablahin eventually? Baka, mm -hmm. na, baka ba dahil siya yung ma-accuse ng corruption? I, 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 I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to mm -hmm. wrap myself around these actions. No? Bakit mm -hmm. ayaw niya? Yeah. Hey, Senator, if you don't mind, idagda, iangkas ko na dito yung, yung tanong ko. Because for me, it, it also goes back to the appointment of Attorney Geran where very clear yung mandate sa kanya. Linisin mo yung PhilHealth, no? And that was where he was coming from. And therefore, a lot of people were asking, is this the, the qualification and the person and the mandate that we need? Because people were saying, we need somebody who understands the system. We need somebody who knows how, to, how the insurance system works, not necessarily an investigator, notwithstanding all the concerns about corruption. I mean, I mean, you say this is bad faith, but a lot of people from the very start also said, maybe he just doesn't have the management skills. And for that matter, on top of that, this pressure that you're there to clean up corruption, not really to make this a more efficient agency. You know, uh, Robbie, two months ago, two and a half months ago, I came out with my report on field health. Hindi binili ng mga kasama ko eh. Konti lang kami ang pumirma. Because maraming excuse. Ayaw ko nang sabihin niya, magagalit pa sa akin yung mga kasama ko. Because there was an investigation led by the Senate President. Ano ba sige, I'll support that investigation. Can I piggyback on your investigation? Tapos na ako. Uh, ayaw nila. Uh, so now, kung ganon, lalabas ngayon yung mga sinasabi ko. Can you imagine? Ang dami-dami. May mga hospital na, na sinisigil lang field health. Yun lang, you can start with that. Yun lang mga, una, yung pinaka-common dyan, yung mga uh, isa mata. Uh, ang ang tagal-tagal na nagnanakaw noon. Uh, alimbawa, dito sa Aquino Medical Specialist Hospital, 50 beds. Ito, sabihin ko ang pangalan, Dennis Adre. Uh, ang claims, 2087, ang binayad, 50 beds yan, 32,974,000 pesos. Hindi ko ba magtataka doon? Uh, sa Bishop Joseph Reagan Memorial Hospital, 180 beds, they paid 49 million. To be fair, in a period of 2014 to 2018. Pero, UST, the biggest university, ni Hindu, habot ng, ng uh, uh, 1 million in binayad. Nakalagay uh, uh, dyan. One, one, no, mabot. 1 million, 42,000, ang single. 700 beds ang UST. Ang claims count 66. Do sa kadala, 3,108. Do sa, uh, sa 180 beds, 3,108. Sa Aquino, 2,087. You start with that, Attorney Giran, makukulong mo na yung taong yan. Isa lang yan, ha? Isa lang. Maraming pa. No. Yung pinanggit nyo, Senator, yung, yung report sa Senate, kasi yung, yung kabilang, yung isang investigation, they covered other cases, eh. Yung senyo, nakafocus kayo dun sa medyo mas matagal ng cases. Anong gagawin niyo doon sa reports na yan? Iko-consolidate pa ba yan? Kasi ay mas... Sabi nila, Senator Naxon, yung report nila is done. So, okay. I even go to that report. Hindi naman ako pikon dyan eh. But, uh, sabi pa sa akin noon sa Senator, boy, kung makakakuha ka ng boto, because maraming may mga kaibigan. Limbawa, ito, hmm. direct siya na. Si Senator, si Congresswoman ka rin, involved sa ding vaksa yan. Hmm. Ha? Naglabas sila ng pera, 3.4, uh, 3.5 billion para doon sa Deng Vaksha. Palpak. Ang dami umangal hanggang ngayon. Ang dami nagdidemand hanggang ngayon. On the same day, I think December 29 of 2015, naglabas na naman sila ng uh, uh, 10.6 billion allegedly to build little barangay clinics. The Court of Appeals found wala sila nagawa oh, from the 5,200 pinababalik sa kanila yung pera. Can you imagine that? Then namili sila ng dental buses na hindi nagagamit. Ah, walang dentista. Kukunti lang, nakabarandal. Walang piyesa. And then they, not only the barangay stations, but yung mga check-up kits na mabibili mo ng mura sa sa Manila. Bambang. Aba, ang lalaki ng overpriced. Eh. Yun lang, makikita niya na kagad ang daming ginagamit yung pera ng PhilHealth, ang daming mga kaso. Eh dapat, 
makita ng tao na may mangyayari. Alam mo, nasasaktan ako, nag-iimbisiga ako. Tapos sabihin, bisiga ka ng imbisiga. Hindi mo na, boss. May report kami. Nag-iimbisiga kami nung immigration na huli namin. Yung cash, 50 million, binawasan pa kunyari ng 1,000 para hindi ma-plunder. O di nakakulong sila ngayon. O, yung sa custom, sinuli namin, nakakulong yan ngayon. Ha? May picture pa nakakulong doon. Ah, yung uh, uh, dito sa drugs, kami nakahuli na dapat meron palang uh, nilagay doon sa bodega tapos tumalis. Dalawang kernel ang tatago ngayon dahil sinabi namin sila ang kasama dyan, hindi mahuli-huli. So talagang ang enforcement really sucks in this country. And I can go on and on and on. It's really exasperating, frustrating, and absolutely dissipating in terms or de-energizes de our country. Anong tingin nyo, sir, sa Mega Task Force on Corruption? I will support it. I hope yes. that they will do it. Uh, Minardo Guevara, I think, is a very decent chap. He's very learned, and uh, we should support him. Uh, kung meron mga ganyan, ako, papadala ko yung mga report ko. At bahala na siya kung gagamitin niya o hindi. I did my best. We have to do all our share. Ganyan okay. lang yan. Eh. Uh, even in Bawit Tong Killings, I'm glad the president is finally saying, We will have motorcycle policemen para hindi makagalaw yung mga riding in tandem. That's good. Pero, I, I still need to know. You remember that itong COVID na ito, tinulungan natin yung medical director ng, na, ng National Mental Hospital, uh, yes. si Rodney something, uh, yes. eh, pinatay. At alam, na, alam ko na kagad na suspect that may gulo sila sa loob. Uh, the privilege which ako, in two weeks, nahuli. Kung gusto, maraming paraan. Kung ayaw, maraming dahilan. Yeah, but Senator, going to that expression na kung gusto maraming paraan, kung ayaw, maraming dahilan. And people are also pointing out, fighting corruption, do we need another task force for that? Sa totoo lang naman, that's the mandate of every government, that's the promise of every uh, president. In the meantime, meron ng presidential anti-corruption anti uh, commission, and, and, and in the face of that, in the face of that, The, 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 the constitutional body tasked precisely to fight corruption, the ombudsman, and the entire of government is standing against the release of salads. Access to salads is harder. And even the office of the ombudsman is actually diminishing the value even of lifestyle checks. So, ano po itong mga task forces in the face of this body language that we're getting from government when it comes to salad and lifestyle checks? I have always said that we have always been a task force oriented society. Hmm. And I think there's a problem, task force so into, task force dito. But we forget, ano naging resulta ng task force? And that's where we fail. Hmm. We must stick to it. We must go out there. Ano report niyo? Ano report niyo? Wala eh. Kaya ako, hindi ko binibitawan yung riding in tandem at the risk of my own life. Because, you know, my father was assassinated also. And we have, uh, you know, there was one judge. When I became, first became uh, senator, Judge Rosales in Batangas, he was assassinated. I, again, I stood up, privileged speech, and I was going to see, I think it was General Aglipa at that time. You know who killed him? Somebody was already in Montilupa, a drug lord there. Nahuli. And yet, and yet, ilan lang yung mga lalaban talaga na huwag niyong, huwag niyong tigilan. Tapusin natin. Hindi yung, alam niyo, palagi yan eh. Uh, pagka uh, may nangyayari, Ngayon, ako, ako, I give the benefit of the doubt of the president. Oh, sabi niya, two years. Sabi niya, inamin niya, I failed sa corruption. Birang presidente lang niya, <laughs> nag-aama amin na bumagsak sa corruption. I'm willing to support him in his last two years. Rather naman, wala tayong ginagawa. We're like uh, bystanders uh, barking like dogs as the caravan passes in the middle of the night. Wala tayong nangyayari sa atin. Pero What Sir Trobis, question nga po, wouldn't yes. that be just another layer, another bureaucracy, given that you have, you already have so many bodies doing the investigation, uh, now you create a mega task force to investigate nga, the entire government? The gustibus non is disubstitando. Each one according to its taste or judgment. Kung yan ang gusto ng Presidente, siya ang Presidente, siya. Kung ako yan, change the guy. Ang next problem, sino ipapalit mo? Pinalitan nga si Morales. I didn't think Morales is that bad, no? Although may mga lapses in uh, judgment, eh, nilagay mo naman ito. Eh, I think it's a good man, basically. I, I, I'm telling you here, Attorney Giran, from what I know, I'm simple in tao. Pero ngayon, natatakot siya, or I don't know what his reasons are, hindi naman niya sinasabi. So, hindi talaga gagalaw. Depende sa tao yan. Gagalaw yan, pagka meron tayong talagang point man, nakafocus, mabilis, talagang flexible, always looking at the horizon para may mangyari. 
Eh, katulad nito, nagagalit na tayo sa Department of Health, kay Duque in particular. I don't want to defend him. But the point is, shall we change all the ministers of health of, of America, of Europe, of UK, everybody? It's back with the vengeance. It's back with the vengeance. The virus. We need to focus on making sure that we are able to solve the problem. And what is the solution? Aba dapat higpitan natin yung mask, yung, yung hawak ng kamay, yung lugas ng kamay, yung distancing, yung ating mga uh, pagsakay sa mga sasakyan, avoid the uh, crowds. Eh, eto nga, sa Olongga po, magmamardig na pa ngayon. <laughs> Natatawa ko. <laughs> Sabi ko, ano ba ito? And they have about 700 cases of, uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, COVID. Ano ba ito? Kako. Buti nga, kinansel yung piyas ng patay. Pero may mardig na. Excuse me. Tulog ka ba tayo? Sa doon na lang gawin yung nasareno. Really, I'm as excited as you believe you me. And a lot of people think, kasi doon tayo may come out strong. If you don't come out strong, you're weak. Kasi may pa siya, senador ka, ba't wala kang ginagawa dyan? Katulad, nasa ba't ko yung 35-year-old na mga retirees ng China? Oo oh. nga, hindi na natin na pag-usapan yun. Tinagos natin, nakakagulat. Ano ba yan? Ha? 35-year-old retired? Ganun na ba kayaman ng China? 35-year-old mag-retired? Pinakamarami sila? Ay, naku. Kasi ang late ng requirement, ang late ng requirement na kailangan uh, for them to bring in. Bumigila ng kumbun. Saan nila din ba lang ng age restriction, di ba? At simple lang naman nun. And we never seem to learn. The Japanese did that to us. They were here, They were building up their strength when they built the Canon Road. The Japanese built Canon Road. Then yeah. they had little Tokyo and Davao. Then they had little places in Pangasinan. They were be, be, making rope. Tapos bigla na lang, Hoy, hello, we're here. Then I said, 35 years old, 27,000 people. That's at least mga 10, 15 regiments. Okay. Okay. Well, sir, maraming salamat po. Um, Philippine Red Cross Chairman... Uh, um, uh, Richard Gordon, sir, thank Richard you for, for joining us tonight. Thank, thank you, sir. Yeah, I, find Sulas, I find Sulas in, the, in uh, the Red Cross because at least sincero yung mga tao, volunteer yung mga tao, gumagalaw siya. Eh, mm -hmm. Misa, nakakapagod dito. At uh, talagang, uh, <laughs> hindi ko na alam kung talagang anong future ibibigay natin sa tao natin. And this has been the same story from the very beginning. I, I, I advise all of you, I read just for my own gratification, yung si ginawa ni James Fallows in 1987. Oh, yeah. Yes, of course. It's still the same. Yeah. Still the same. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glad I could be a uh, guest in your show. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We will just get your break. James Fallows. Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just get yeah. your break, so please stay with us.
Welcome back to the Chiefs. We're now in the final stage of our conversation. We're waiting for our next guest to come on come, come online, but we're having a bit of technical difficulty. So, pag-usapan muna natin yung mega task force yung pinanggalingan natin ngayon. Ano bang Alam tingin mo yung ano yung libro? Oh, oh, damage culture. Oh, 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 mm. culture. Oh, oh, oh tayo oh. raw yun. Oo oh, nga. Although, maraming mga, siyempre, yung ibang commentator, hindi uh, oh. na ito magandang sabihin yun about the Philippines. <laughs> yeah, mm. maraming nagalit ito na actually. Oo, oh, oh, oh. maraming yeah. maganda. Pero yung sa mega task force, anong tingin nyo may pag-asa ba yun? There's a lot of skepticism about it. Ah. Parang, uh, parang kasi, well, gusto ko nga sabihin kanina sa kanya, eh, ikaw uh, nga eh, may sarili kang investigation on PhilHealth last year. Uh, Na wala hmm. nangyari doon, di ba? Hindi nga niya na isulong. Parang pinagbigyan yeah. na lang niya itong more recent investigation. So yes. parang gusto nga, siya, gusto nga siya sabihan na talaga lang, dadamihan lang yung task force, mag investigate pero wala na magagawa, di ba? Ano, hmm. Ang dami niyang, niyang nilista na mga katiwalian sa PhilHealth na talaga namang serious, we will agree. But, well, where would that lead to now? You yeah. wonder, hmm. right? Because Parang now, kahit siya si Minardo Gibara, no? I mean, he has a lot of respect, I think, no? Saka kahit yeah. maraming maraming tao yung task force na, eventually, yung bagsak niya kay Ombudsman, eh. Hmm. So, Ultimately, yes. Tapos sa akin, hindi yan ba yan? Eh, yung Ombudsman natin, what can you say about him? And no, yun yung sinasabi natin. You don't have to say anything about him. He's spoken <laughs> out about it. <laughs> hey, teka muna. Yeah, I mean, his argument is, teka muna, bakit natin bibigay? Ano ba yung lifestyle check? Naniniwala kayo dyan. <laughs> eh, 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 baka maging sagabal pa yan. Ginagamit pa yan na pang blackmail sa mga public servants natin. Yes. Now we're weaponized. I mean, going totally yeah. from the opposite direction. And it's not as if people are saying, pagka lifestyle check ka, guilty ka na. It yeah, actually no, goes precisely to their point that this is a tool. It's not only just a tool. It's one. Of, it's the most important tool to start things off. Yeah. Yeah. Ay, yung, alam niyo, it's on our constitution, ha? Article 11, Section 17. Ayan, tinang, tinandaan ko na. Actually, oh. oh. There has to be oh, every year. Ng oh, Diyan ang gobyerno ng 2003 doon sa, ano, sa Marcos Court, doon sa, ano, sa, sa Swiss Bank Accounts. Sa, yeah. ano, the Supreme Court ruled that uh, disproportionate talaga yung, ano, yung uh, accounts ng Marcos S with uh, yung kanilang uh, legal salary for yeah, naman. 21 years yeah, that they were in power. Yan yeah, naman. Hmm. At ang basis niyan were sal-ends. Uh, yes. Although although we have a sal in law, there's a previous sal in law pa before it was called the sal in uh, uh, in the late 50s and 60s, and and mm -hmm. uh, they were they had to file sal in even then, although it wasn't called sal in then. Um, mm -hmm. Their yeah. uh, well, 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 combined the uh, asset declaration yeah. in 1964 was around uh, 120,000. Pero sa ngayon it's required even under the uh, code of conduct eh, that you have to file. Yeah. Yeah. Pero no, but how do you, it's closure, it's well, in the Constitution. No, well, but how do you, how do you, you assert that? You have to when file you, and you have to disclose. Disclose? No. Disclose? Those two no. things, hindi, hindi one well, or the other lang. The uh, but then, uh, and then they dinadaan nila sa internal rules. And now when you look at it, every branch of government, the executive, the legislature, and even the judiciary have their own rules with under the law before they actually release it. So when you look at it, sa Congress, for example, alam na yan ang mga nasa congressional beat. Lahat yeah. ng mahihimu ka rin. Kailangan yeah. ka magpaalam. Kailangan ka magpaalam. Magpapaalam ka sa congressman himself. Di ba nakakatawa yun? <laughs> oh, and hindi lang doon. Sa buong kongreso, sa plenario. The plenary oh. also has to give their blessing. Di ba? So, Tapos so, ngayon, the... The Supreme Court also. Hindi mo lang basta magmaukuha. Supreme Court, di ba? Nauna mm. yung Supreme Court eh. Na mm. sila yung pinaka-opaque actually. Ewan ko ba naman kung anong pinag tinatago na weaponized daw yung salen na yan. Eh di tanggalin nila muna dun sa... Tanggalin muna nila sa batas, di ba? Kung gusto nila. Eh may batas no, na dito. Whatever happened to the freedom of information? You remember? I mean, mm. yan yung mga aggressively pushed. Na, lang. Uh, supposedly from day one. Tapos yung 
whiff of corruption. Saan pa mag-umpisa yung whiff kundi sa, I mean, sa aminin na natin, sa lifestyle check, di ba? Parang mm. gano'n naman yun eh, pagka, pagka nakaka, di ba, nakakapansin ka ng, na, yeah. parang mating lang yung maman to, di ba? Or, mm. You don't know anymore where to begin, no? And, 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 and you're being is, told to not be malicious, in effect. Oh, yeah. Diba? Eh, hindi lang yun. Diba? Yesterday, we were talking to the spokesperson of this new mega task force, Yusek, uh, Yusek Villar. And in, immediately, when, when we did ask about, you know, what will be the task force's position on what the ombudsman said about lifestyle checks, Ang, I mean, immediately they're echoing that same argument. Na, eh, ano ba, ano ba talaga probative value niyang lifestyle check na yan? Di naman natin pwedeng asahan yan. That's just one of the tools. Marami naman kami iba pwedeng gamitin. Which is totally either deliberately missing the point or they don't yeah. get the point. Then that just makes it even more perplexing. What use will this bolting in of all of these task force do if at exactly. the end of the day... Everybody takes on that on that very glib statement na hindi, we'll find a way, pero huwag na natin guluhin yung mga public officials natin sa mga lifestyle check na yan. Oo. Hmm. Ay, ako. Okay. Ano lang update sa ating next Apart from the ombudsman, yung anti-graft court natin, hindi ba? Marami din questions dyan eh, lahat. Lalo na yung sa pagdating sa Marcos X, lahat halos na di-dismiss except one. Na-conviction mm. niya tayo, si Salton Bell. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, napag-usapan yung Marcos, di ba? Uh, mm. Malaki din balita ngayon yung pagpasa nitong, nitong house bill <laughs> na ideklarang holiday ang birthday ni Ferdinand Marcos sa Ilocos Norte. Oh. Mm. Yan. Hey. <laughs> kanina, nabanggit ni, nabanggit ni oh. Senator kanina yung article ni James Fallows nga, di ba? Oh, oh, oh. 1987 pa yan. But among other things, that article by James Fallows was precisely talking about the things that it's as if Filipinos cannot confront face on. Yung para bang, uh, he mentions delicadeza, he mentions the, the people oh. tiptoeing around this very yeah. conversation of kung masamang tao, kung kumbiktado na, and so on, kumbiktado yan. They will face it, teach it, remember it, never forget. But James Fallows was talking about, eh nga, he captured it in one phrase that was very controversial at that time, a damaged culture. Damaged. Sabi nga ni Senator Gordon, binasa niya eh, eh so many years later, parang, parang kahapon lang itong article na ito ah. Mm. Uh, well, Marami, sabi ko nga, marami ring nagre-react dyan na hindi naman daw magandang description yun sa Pilipinas. Kaya lang, mm. even the president himself has said na napaka-deeply entrenched mm. ng corruption na yan ang problema eh. Mm. Kaya, kaya nga tinatanong ano kaya ang kalalabasan yung mega task force na yan. Kung pagdating naman sa korte, dun sa prosecution arm, yung ombudsman, wala rin mm. yung mga eh. Di ba? Kaya, mm. kaya walang natututo dito, walang napaparusahan nyo. Kaya catch a big fish na napapardon. Walang mm. nagugulong eh. Wala tayong mm. image na ato, ano ito mangyayari sa'yo kapag nagnakaw ka. Papa, wala mm. tayong naroon, di ba? Yeah. Pero kanina, I mean, Luchi, you were raising a very good question kanina about ano bang kinakatakutan ni Ator ni Giran sa PhilHealth? Di ba? Di ba? Di ba? I was getting the sense from, from, I mean, from everything that Ayun nga, parang eh, ay, Senator Gordon did refer also na para bang na-freeze ka, parang ayaw mong gumalaw kasi ayaw mong mapagbintangan. Di ba? Mm -hmm. But you have you still have a job to do. But that also goes to a question of corruption dahil ganyang ka-entrench sa mga sindikato, ganyang kahirap i-uproot ang, ang ano. Tapos ikaw, kung sino yung ayaw, kung sino yung gustong linisin ng corruption, siya yung papasok at sa umpisa pa lang, dehado na siya. Alam niya <laughs> Ako, <laughs> dami. Sana, sana ako mauunang gumalaw dito. Siguro, siguro dahil oh, sir, sa... Ganyan ka unfamiliar si Geram uh, doon sa system si uh, Tide. Hmm, si siguro hmm. tingin niya parang yung interim ano, reimbursement, eh, parang advance. Yun ang tingin siguro niya doon sa deal. Na parang hmm. advance payment to at yun ang hiningi niyang... Kaya alam bakit naman gano, ka, ganong katagal bago hmm. lumabang ano, yung... Lalo yung <laughs> dito na ano, diba? Yung, yung sinabi ng district. Hindi lang siya signatory doon sa, sa MOA with Red Cross. Kung tutusin, di ba? Hindi naman mm. siya pwedeng 
hindi naman pa, siya pwedeng ma-implicate doon in any way. So parang I'm trying to understand, what is he afraid of? Hindi naman siya, wala siyang interest doon eh. Hindi naman niya pinush yun, di ba? Pero, uh, pero siya yung maglalabas ng bayad. Siya yung tipo na ng bayad eh. Kasi e, e, anything na involving payment, anything involving public funds, eh, eh iniisip siguro niya, kailangan suppose, tignan niya mabuti. Yeah, and I suppose, uh, also bear in mind, na uh, uh, remember his his predecessor was also put there precisely yes. to clean up the place. Clean up. Oh, to clean up. His predecessor and, uh, was put there with a good reputation, uh, task hmm. with cleaning up the place, and he oh. left. Uh, he left uh, <laughs> under uh, in tatters. Oh, yeah. mm. And he was defending himself huh? up to the last minute, up to now, sinasabi niya, wala akong ginawang masama dyan. Now, and, speak, yeah. and speaking of kanina yung point ni Luchi na, hindi naman siya yung pumirma. Bakit niya kailangan, ano, but I mean, just to show everyone na hindi rin namin po alam yung sagot dito. But ganyan ka gulo yung usapan because even, even now, uh, when, for example, Health Secretary Francisco Duque as chairman of PhilHealth, hindi din pinapoint out ng mga tao, eh, bakit siya accountable? Hindi naman siya pumirma. But the command responsibility principle doesn't stop with, with the question of sino ba pumirma and so on, as Secretary Duque, on the other hand, also, also illustrates. So, damned if you do, damned if you don't. And really, the only thing it points out here is, they, I mean, that much we're willing to concede to anybody who takes that post. Masalimuot talaga yan. And everybody takes it from the first, from the premise. Now it's very much entrenched. It's very much systemic. And the question now is, yes. will it allow? Will, it, will you let it freeze you when it comes to the other mandate of not just cleaning it up of corruption, but making that bureaucracy work, notwithstanding all of its problems? Corruption mm. resilient, no? Mm. corruption resilient. Kapareho yun ang sinabi sa atin ng ano, nung, uh, anti-red tape no, na no, di lang daw enough na mag-computerize. Kailangan daw the oh. system itself needs to be overhauled before you transfer it to the digital system. Kung hindi oh. daw lahat ng red tape, inililipat mo lang sa computer. Oh. So, oh. so, so yun, yun okay. ang problema. Oh. We we uh, we have word. Uh, we just got word right now. Uh, well, we, we earlier we earlier had Secretary uh, Sylvester Belli of the Labor Department backstage, uh, yes. and he was already ready a while ago during the gap. Pero he uh, he has begged off uh, uh, from the interview. Uh, it looks like uh, it looks like he has uh, another commitment to uh, attend to right now. So, Mohandi mm -hmm. uh, Secretary Belli tonight. Okay. Mm. So, uh, yun, uh, yes. we uh, we have to wrap up the show already. Okay. okay. Mm. okay. Yeah. And okay. Yeah. that's it for this uh, weekend edition of The Chiefs. We hope what was discussed here will keep the conversation going. I'm adding up on news. I'm Ami Pamintuan of the Philippine Star. I'm Luchi Cruz Valdez of News 5. I'm Rob. Wait, you know I'm sorry. Wait, you know what I'm saying? Am I in the right forum? Okay. 
Nasa po si Luchi. Hindi po. Ako hindi po. Ako hindi po si Luchi. Ang news 5. I'm Robbie Alampay. We are One News.